<laughs> Solar is a very personal thing, right? Because the amount of electricity that you use in your house is going to change how much solar you need. And, you know, if you're willing or interested in making changes to reduce your usage, that is also going to affect the amount of solar. What I'm going to do is, first of all, just a quick definition, a kilowatt hour, when you get your electricity bill from uh, your utility, it's going to say you use X amount of kilowatt hours, and then you're going to have a rate that multiplies that, and that's going to give you what your bill is, probably with some taxes and some other stuff too. But a kilowatt hour is a thousand watts being used for one hour, okay? And I'm not going to get into the definition of watts and amps and, and all that stuff. Uh, I do have a podcast that I'll tell you about later that all that information is on there. Oh, good. I haven't updated it in a long time, but the information on there is, is good. Um, so what I'm going to do is, real quick, I'm, I'm going to run through some numbers. I'm going to use the uh, U.S. averages for a, a family home and for cost per kilowatt hour and stuff like that and just show you where the price point kind of needs to be based on an X amount of payback you know, X number of years payback, for it to actually make sense economically. For me, I live off grid. I live off grid because when I, I, I wanted to be off grid, but I got there a lot faster than I really kind of thought I would. Because when I bought a house, the guy that built the house didn't look into the cost of running electricity to it. So he didn't when he found out it was gonna cost him 40 grand. And so, they just, the house is wired to code, ready to go, had a place where a meter should be, and they just ran it off of a generator, okay? So when we bought the place, we kind of looked at what our usage was, because our, our idea was to eventually go off grid. And, and little by little, we put our system together to where we were fully off grid with an inverter, battery bank, solar panels, the whole nine yards. So just a few little averages, let me make sure this is dry erase. Right. How long have you been doing that now? Because I know you talked about this last time. Yeah, so five years. Five years, that's yeah. awesome. So uh, April 2012, so we moved in, and uh, the first couple yeah. components went in April, and the, we had the system finished out by February of 2013, and that's because I was value shopping. I, I wasn't gonna buy it unless I could get a deal for it. And the la actually the last piece I got was my solar panels. Like I had my combiner box and my charge controller six months before I got I bought the solar panels. Um, Can you tell me where you live first so you uh, average uh, Tennessee, I get four and a half hours a day on average. Of, How many days a year? Well, I, on average, I got four and a half hours a day. So over the whole 365 day year. And so if you think about it, in the morning, so your panel is sitting there, right, and the sun's coming down first thing in the morning, and maybe you're getting 10% for the first couple hours of the day, and then, you know, maybe for the next couple hours of the day, you're getting 40%, and then during the middle of the day, you you hit 100%, and then your panel gets hot, so it drops to 90. So over the course of a day, you're getting the equivalent of four and a half hours of sun at whatever your rating of your panel is. Mm. So when you when you look at the uh, NREL map and it kind of tells you how many hours of day of insulation you get, and it'll, it'll break it down by the month. But over the course of the year, where I live, I average four and a half hours. Where we are right now, we average five and five point three. So there's more sun on average over the course of a year. Yeah. Does that depend on? Is that assuming the fixed panel orientation we're tracking? Actually, excellent question. So the NREL maps have about 12 different options. So you can do single axis tracking, you can do double axis tracking, you can do uh, flat mount, you can do mount at the latitude, you can do latitude plus 15, latitude minus 15. So yeah, you can look, You can even look at it and say, okay, for a certain part of the year, I'm gonna be at latitude plus 15, then I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna move it, so you can pull that data out. Great place for information. But so, again, back to the averages. So I wrote these down earlier. So the average house, has working dry erase markers um, and it also uses 10,700 kilowatt hours per year all right an average yeah. house yes sir 10,700 10, uh, kilowatt hours per year um, my house will use about a quarter a fifth to a quarter of that um, and so the uh, the average price of electricity in the U.S. is 12 cents per kilowatt hour. And the average uh, electricity company, and of course this is over the, the, the whole U.S., raises the price per kilowatt hour 4% per year. All right, so every year it's going to go up. 
four percent. Right, so that's an important data point to understand because you're thinking about the payback over a longer term. So uh, just quick math, this times that, so that's 1,200 and, um, I'm sorry, bear with me, 1,284 per year. That's what your average house is going to pay in electricity costs, right? Some people are going to be three times that, some people are going to be half that, but that's the average, all right? Now what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to show you at a 4% per year increase, in 10 years, using the exact same amount of electricity is going to cost you $1,827. Oh. The figure above doesn't include tax. Correct, right. This is, this is your, that's your average base because those, those numbers are going to vary by municipality. I mean, some months are 300, some months are 50 bucks, but there's always those damn taxes, right? Right, that's right. Mm -hmm. So, so this is what it is in ten. All right. How much was that again? Uh, twelve hundred eighty-four dollars a year is the average, and then uh, in ten years, at a four percent per year increase, this doesn't. I'm not taking into account inflation or anything else. This is that's just what the yeah. average utility shrinks your rate up every year. It's coming to about eighteen hundred. In ten years, that's eighteen hundred twenty-seven. So over that ten-year period, and just for simple math, I'm going to take nine years at twelve eighty-four, and the tenth year at eighteen twenty-seven. Your cost is going to be thirteen thousand. You're going to be paying thirteen thousand three hundred and eighty-three dollars. Right? Doesn't seem like that much money for ten years of electricity, right? And and realistically, it's not. It, yeah. You think about what it costs, you know, like what it takes to generate a kilowatt of electricity. That's pretty cheap, and, and get it to where you are. Um, so this is what we're. This is our ten-year cost. All right. So. And, and, and again, like I said, these are average numbers. If you look at, just real quick, an efficient house is going to have a baseline that's going to look like this, and it's going to have a summer peak and a winter peak in usage, right? And, the, and this is an inefficient house or a house that's in a very extreme climate. And then a, an efficient house in a mild climate is going to have a lower baseline, and it's also going to have lower peaks and valleys. So, you know, you may see uh, your electricity bill you may be using 1,800 uh, kilowatt hours in August and only uh, 900 in December, right? So, um, so again, it's all averages. I don't want you to go back and say, "Honey, I went to the class, and if we can get this uh, system put in for 14 grand, we're basically prepaying 10 years worth of electricity, and then for the next 15 year useful life of the system, we get free, right?" So they're all averages. I just wanted to kind of break everything down because it's been something that's been on the podcast recently. So where we are right now, we average 5.3. Hours of uh, insulation per day, and if we take that and multiply it times 365 days in a year, and, and again, some of those days we're going to get much higher than 5.3, some days we're going to get close to zero. Even when it's cloudy, as long as you open the door and it's not pitch black outside, your, your panels are actually still working because they work on visual light. Um, so based on that, we're getting uh, 1,934 and a half solar hours per year. All right, so let me find a place where I can write that down. So 365 times 5.3 per day is 1,934 and a half. So if we know that we've got kilowatt hours and then we know that we've got hours, right, then we can divide one by the other and we're left the hours, you know, X out, we're left with kilowatts, right? So if we do that, uh, bear with me one second, we get, uh, we need a 5,531 watt, 5,531 watt installation to get 10,700 kilowatt hours per year, okay? So this is the, this is the size of the solar system, watts, all right? Not kilowatts, watts, or 5.531 kilowatts. So we know how much it cost us over 10 years, and that 10 years is the number we're using just because it's round and it you know ends in a zero. And but the reality is is that all of these panels that you're buying these days are rated typically they're rated for a minimum of 90% of their nameplate capacity at 10 years. 
and a minimum of 80% of their name ca plate capacity at 25 years. If I'm gonna put a 25 year warranty on something, I'm probably gonna build it to last for about 40, right? The other nice thing is, is you've got panels out there now that are being so overbuilt because the the, the components are becoming cheaper and cheaper and cheaper that, I mean, you, I could see panels lasting 50 years realistically in, in bad conditions where you got snow and hail and everything else. <laughs> but now that we know how many watts we need and, and how much we would pay, we know that it, the, 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 uh, the break even is going to be... Yeah, someone check my math. Anybody got a calculator on their phone? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, better question. Anyone carrying around a calculator? <laughs> what do you got? Uh, 13,383 divided by 5531. <laughs> How press it should be? 2.242? Alright, that's what I had. I just wanted to make sure. 2.42 per watt <laughs> installed. I realize you've been here a year. Alright. 2.42 per watt installed. Right now, in the United States, the average cost of a solar installation is anywhere from two dollars and eighty-seven cents to three dollars and eighty-five cents. Okay, we're really not that far away on a ten-year payback. All right. Now there is a capital outlay. Obviously, you got to have the capital sitting around or a way to way to finance the capital, which changes the payback. But the reality is, is that we're forty cents right now on the low end of the scale. Which, by the way, Texas is on the low end of the scale. We're 40 cents away from having a 10-year payback on this stuff with components that are going to last 25 plus years. Okay. Does that include battery banks? No. Great question. I was going to include the rebates too. No, it doesn't. Excellent. Another excellent question. Also, so, do, do, do we pay 12 cents here? What's that? We pay 12 cents. You don't pay 12 cents here. No. Uh, actually, I think on the podcast the other day, Jack says paying seven right now, which is ridiculously low. And which would make that actually, yeah, absolutely, it changes changes the math. Absolutely. Um, the uh, all right. So first question, or I'll get to the battery. Whoever asked the batteries, I'll get to the batteries in a second. Let's talk about the rebate first. So there's a thirty um, percent uh, federal tax rebate. And depending on the state that you live, typically there's uh, state level rebates. You may have net metering. I wouldn't rely on net metering because they could just legislate that out of existence, you know, with a stroke of a pen. But the reality is, is right now, if you're at 287 and you're getting that 30% back, you're at cost parity over a 10 year payback period, right? Now, one of the things, the, the reason why I didn't include the 30 cents is because I also didn't include some efficiency losses that you're going to get to go from this 5531 to actually get it into your into your meter. Okay, so the, the efficiency losses, depending on the, the the system that you're using, depending on the the length of the wire run, you know, depending on whether you put it on a tiltable system or not. You may need to put in, you know, six to seven thousand watts to get fifty-five thirty-one. Now, but the reason why I left it out is the worst-case scenario for all those efficiency losses added together is less than thirty percent. So, any efficiency losses we have are going to be canceled out by that thirty percent rebate. Now, the batteries. So, the battery system changes the the dynamic, and that's where. Me being a guy that lives off grid, I'm really excited about the changes that I'm seeing in, in battery technology right now, uh, particularly as we're going towards these potentially autonomous vehicles that are, you know, going to be more than likely electric vehicles because they're going to be localized. And the reality is, is that you're 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 looking at probably another dollar a watt on average on the course of a system to get your charge controller, to get your batteries, and the wiring. Now the problem right now is is that half of that cost, which is the batteries, are going to are going to go out in about five years. Okay, right now the most cost effective way to store your energy is still lead acid batteries. Okay, you can go acid glass mat, you can go uh, nickel iron. You know, you can do. I mean, a nickel iron battery is like. Twelve, fifteen thousand dollars, right? Yeah. But it lasts forever. So it's it's that thing where you have to weigh the capital outlay versus the the return. And so for me, 
If I can get my batteries to last five years, they're my cheapest option, even if I literally have to change them every five years on the day. And I'm a little over five years right now. I put them in in April of 2012, and I'm, I'm here in uh, November of, of 2017 with the same batteries. They still working? Yeah, the still, same? yeah. They seem like I wouldn't call them, I wouldn't say they're the same, but they're still working very well. Yeah. Is that because you did good maintenance on them? Absolutely. A lead acid battery, you have to, and you can, the, these inverters these days, you can program them to where when they get down, the batteries get down to a certain point, it just turns the system off. You know, I had a guy ask me, he said, man, I hear you talk about all the time, you use a hand grinder for your coffee, for my hollow roast coffee. Yeah. Hand grind it, propane stove, heat the water up, pour it into French press, psh, pour it out, I'm done, right? And he's like, uh, you hand grind your coffee, I mean, come on. Uh, a coffee grinder uses like almost no electricity. I'm like, yeah, but if it's January 2nd, and I'm, or January 1st, and I'm hungover, and I do not want to have to walk out there and reset my inverter or crank my generator, in order to turn that button, I can just stumble into the kitchen and, and grind some coffee up and get my hangover medicine working. You know, I don't have to worry about that. So, especially, it doesn't get too cold in, in, in Tennessee in January, but it's not warm either, right? So, um, so yeah, there is that. And, and the trade-off on the battery side is you're getting the autonomy. You're getting the, I don't have to rely. Because right now, if you, if you put a solar system on your roof, and you run it through your meter and you get your net metering and everything, when the grid goes down, your solar system gets turned off too. Because you don't, they don't want you putting power back onto the grid. The only way to have a, an autonomous system is to add the batteries. So the, the batteries don't really pencil out when it comes to return on investment unless you're in a situation like me. That is, that is investment in peace of mind and investment in the fact that, okay, realistically, this 10,700 kilowatt hours coming from the sun is going to come in to my house at a different time than when I'm going to use it, right? So when I'm around the, the TV with my wife and kids watching a, a movie at 8 o'clock at night, I'm not getting anything out of my solar panel, So I got, I got, but I have the batteries. So what battery capacity do you have? What's that? How many amp hours? Do you I have, have uh, 675 amp hours at 24 volts. And I've got a, uh, my, my inverter is a, um, it's a uh, Magnum Energy, uh, I've got 220 uh, volt poles coming off of it, so I get 240 at the house, and just like, because like I said, my house is wired to code, they just forgot to find out about what it's going to cost to get that run up there, and um, I've got a well pump that when it's cold and the water's dense and I'm pushing a 270 foot column of water straight up, it draws nearly 10,000 watts on startup. So what I did is I put in a rainwater harvesting system with grade level storage with a quarter horsepower pump that draws a tenth of that. You know, so those are the things that I'm doing. Now that the system's up and working and over time I'm putting those other redundancies in place and, and stuff like that. But the, the main point was is just to illustrate the fact that we're not, I mean, in this number right here, we, uh, oh, I didn't write down. It's 287 to 335. 385. That's installed. So that includes the installer. Yes. So what, what, what 30 you do if, you, if you integrate it and put it in yourself? Excellent question. Exactly where I was getting ready to go. 30% of that number right there is labor. And another 15 to 25 percent, depending on where in the country you are, is overhead profit for the company that's putting it in. Um, right now, you can buy a 275 watt Canadian solar uh, panel for 163 dollars, which is 59 cents per watt for the panel. Which is you need about 25 of those to get that wattage. Uh, yeah, whatever 5531 divided by 275 is. Anybody got a one of those Texas instruments in there? Right. Yeah, and um, you know, there, there, the reality is, is that there's you can get better than this with some technology like tracking systems, even even an adjustable mount where you've got two, three different uh, angle options and you go up and change it three times a year. You could automate that, could not you? What's that? You could automate that. Couldn't. You could automate that. When I put my system in. It wasn't cost effective to put it on a tracking mount. Yeah, the last two years, they really right. 
Yeah, uh, when I put mine in, I, I looked at a tracking mount, and uh, it just wasn't cost effective. The amount of gain I could make up with just buying it, buying more panels, and it was cheaper, you know. So, um, got two hundred seventy-five watt panels. One hundred sixty-three dollars at altstore.com. Okay. Yeah. And that's not that's a that's a one price. If you buy it by the pallet, it gets cheaper. You get a bunch of buddies together and buy it by the container load. That's thirty percent of what I paid. Right. I paid um, my entire system. I paid about three hundred three dollars and eighty three cents a watt, and I did all the labor myself. And that was five years ago. And now we're at two eighty seven, with half of that number being labor, profit, and overhead for the installer. And the thirty percent. That's... Yeah, not. Uh, that number doesn't include, my number I just gave you didn't include the, the tax rebate, and neither does this. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, it's everything's going in the right direction to where... Is state level in Tennessee for rebate? What's that? Rebate at the state level. There's no rebate at the state level for Tennessee. TVA will write you a $1,000 check once you hook it to the grid, and then they'll pay you $0.11 cents per kilowatt hour and sell it to idiots for $0.20 cents per kilowatt hour. Green. Yep, the green power switch program. <laughs> yeah. This is crazy. It's yeah. The same line Wait, the yeah, the exact same everything, like the same line and everything, but... You pay twenty cents to pretend like that the, yeah, the so actual electrons that come into your house came from a green uh, system. <laughs> <laughs> you know anything about the new tariffs that are going to be coming around uh, to see against some cheap Chinese solar? Uh, the one thing I know about it is I don't know if it's actually going to happen. I, I think it is. Well, they talk. There's still some stock that if you want to get it, get it now because they saw the old stock. But come whenever. Would you say what that is? What's that? What he's talking about? The uh, yeah, he's talking about tar tariffs on tariffs on Canadian um, uh, solar panel or not Canadian uh, Chinese solar panels. Now the uh, interesting thing, you can actually at a, at a price per watt basis. You can just about buy them from Europe for the same price per watt as you can buy them from China. The difference is, is the cost per panel is much higher because those guys have a much lower tolerance for, or a much, a, a much, they, they use a different process with much more pure silicone and their efficiencies per panel are, are jacked up. I don't think that the uh, tariffs hit the Canadian one. Well, actually, you know, now that they, so Canadian Canadian yeah. solar panels are actually made in China. They they own yeah they own plants in China now. Hmm. But so you know I think I'm, this is a solar so solar I, I'm sorry I shouldn't even say it. I think it's just for Oregon because solar Oregon was producing panels and then they got just screwed over by the imports and I think the state of Oregon just is not going to do a terrible. The thing I want to really point out is is that if you know if you can get into a Facebook group of other people that are doing this and pull your money. I mean, I bought mine uh, by the pallet, okay? Mine are actually sharp panels. They're, they're made in Memphis, Tennessee. and But I got them for uh, the actual panels themselves were about $1.80 uh, a watt is what I paid for them, which was a great price in 2012 for U.S.-made solar panels. Um, but I got that good rate because I bought a pallet full from a liquidation warehouse. How big, big, how big do you take to get 100 watts out of it? What's one that? Pan, one panel do 100 watts? Or one uh, do yeah, no, my, my, each one of my panels is 285 watts, and they're about that by that. Uh, HackMySolar.com if you want to check that out. Like I said, I, I haven't done a whole lot with it since July. I got super busy with real life. And uh, haven't put a lot of time into it, but there are eight podcasts on there where I start with the basics of energy and work all the way up through, you know, designing systems, battery banks, stuff like that. So, aren't you doing you consulting work? On What's that? Aren't you doing consulting work? I've done some free consulting work, <laughs> and my first paid consulting job is actually next month. Hey, you might be able to barter sometime. Yeah. Tomorrow night. <laughs> I actually tried to barter that at the at the last one, and I had one taker and. Every time I call him, he's like, ah, oh, man, I'm not ready yet. Oh, so. <laughs> what was the name of the company? Well, you got the goods, though, didn't you? It's Canadian Solar, but uh, the, the best price I found from was at Alt, A-L-T, the letter E, 
store. Alt E, like alt alternative electricity. Alt E store. Would you be afraid to buy Chinese panels? Hell no. Then you need to get with me Look, because I got a guy that does importing and does logistics. Remember when I texted you and said I need to get together and learn everything you know about yeah. importing from China? Yeah. That's what it was for. Okay. And then real life was like, <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna have any more time. Any other questions? All right, guys. Well, I mean, I'm here the rest of the time if you got questions. Great, thank you. Thank you. So I, I saw an emerging technology. I think it was a Facebook thing. Somebody showed me. I haven't checked it out. They take the solar collectors and put them on like a cone-shaped device that spins. Oh yeah, yeah. And the idea is that they don't heat up that way because it's so it's so you, you don't lose significantly more efficient. Right. Because those panels, when they get hot, are going to do less. Than so, so I get that. I get asked this question all the time, so I'll just put it out there. The reason why they don't produce as much when they're hot is the whole idea is you've got these excited electrons, and they jump from one place to the other. They get captured, and then they get sent through into your batteries. When they're hot, they're already more excited, so they're less likely to jump. Right. More resistant. Yeah. So, but yeah, maybe some significant. I see a, you could set your driveway instead see, of on your roof. I see a lot of that stuff. And my thing is, if there's not a link where I can click on it and buy it, I don't believe it. It's as far as I'm concerned, it's still concept. If I can't click on a link and buy it right now, because I see the stuff like you could put a you could put a wind turbine in your house for the price of an iPhone. Like, sell it to me. I'll put it up tomorrow. <laughs>